So I had a really cool opportunity this morning to uh, actually break out the drone and shoot a ship getting underway. Hello and welcome. I'm Tim and this is Tim B at Sea. And hey, guess what? We're down in the Caribbean. That's right, no longer in New York. Well, just a little change of contract here and a little change of scenery. So if you want to see something different, maybe a side of the Caribbean you've never seen before, come on over every Tuesday and uh, see us, see what we do down here. It's a different type of the towing industry. It's actually towing on the wire. A lot of deep water towing, uh, crazy ports, all kinds of fun stuff. So come along and strap in and hope you enjoy the ride. So after getting the pilot's permission, I uh, broke out the drone and had to fly across the bay. We're down here in Guayanilla, Puerto Rico, anchored up. And it was a beautiful day, and there's a hurricane going by the north side of the island. Eh, a couple hundred miles away, but uh, anyway, it seemed to have sucked a lot of the wind out that we normally, would normally have. And that wind usually keeps me from flying other than early in the morning. So uh, anyway, this was about, I don't know, 10 or 11 in the morning, and there was hardly any wind. And this ship is, uh, I stepped it off on the on the chart plotter. It's uh, just about almost a mile away, uh, three quarters of a mile away. So I had to burn up a whole lot of battery just getting over to it. But uh, this is a ship that came in and was discharging and is coming off. Uh, they're they're going to sail, you know, it's going to come off the dock. They're going to sail it here. And it ultimately went to anchor. And I'm, I'm not really sure why. I don't know uh, what, they're, what they're doing next, but that's their thing. So right now you can see two of the local assist boats that are working on it. And the, those two tugboats will hold it, pressing it up against the dock as they're taking in the lines. Now if you can see, you can see there's still uh, those blue lines there. There's a couple fore and aft leading uh, uh, spring lines. And it uh, looks like the bow and stern lines have already been taken in. You can see the uh, deck crew working away over there. I'm trying to stay out of everyone's way so that I don't distract anyone. I think I'm far enough up that they, they probably didn't even know it was happening. Now in other videos I've, I've talked about how uh, a lot of people think they see my wheel wash uh, stirring up the bottom. Well, it's about 40 or 50 feet deep right here, and you can see that uh, these tugboats, um, even them, when they're, when, they're, when they're pushing against a ship like this, uh, they can uh, stir up the bottom as well. So that sand right there doesn't mean that they're going, it just, it just gets cloudy for a second, that's all. Sometimes longer than that, depending on how it goes. Some people will ask, what's that in the water on the starboard side of the ship? That's actually what we call a boom. That's an oil boom. So when the ship comes in, they'll have one of these that runs the whole length of the dock, and then they'll have another one that a boat will pull out and uh, encapsulate the whole ship. So in the event that they had a hose break or something, uh, the, the ship discharged oil for one reason or another, it would be contained in that containment boom. So they call that an oil boom. So the outside one has been left, has been pulled away, and the inside one is there. Now it looks like the uh, pilot is probably giving the order to start uh, coming astern. Probably clutch, a, clutch astern on two, maybe even a little bit more. We'll see if we start seeing some smoke coming out. But uh, you can see the line is starting to get tight. You see some water coming out of the bow of the ship. And uh, okay, now it looks like they're starting to start apply power for kind of backing down on the tugboats right now. Yeah, you see some water coming out of the hose pipes of the ship there. The hose pipes are the pipes that the chain goes down to the anchor and then goes into the water there. Um, you, those are usually running with the capstans, the, the, the windlass that hauls the anchor up and down. And they're not using the anchor right now. They have that part of the whole windlass disconnected. But they're probably using the winch parts to haul in the, the lines. The lines are very big and very heavy. So it can't be hauled in by hand. 
So here's the uh, assist tug working on the stern right now, and as you can see, he's backing down pretty good. The more and more I fly this drone, the more uh, confident I'm getting. Uh, I've been wanting to come over here for a long time, but it wasn't until this last time off where uh, I was up in Maine flying the drone and really, really flew it a long ways away, so I started saying, oh, I guess it can go that far out, so it was fine, but uh, getting the problem with getting it all the way over here is that it has to get all the way back, and as you'll see, you can't swap batteries mid-air, <laughs> so... Uh, I would have liked to have shown you more, but anyway, you can see right here, we've the, the assist tugs have backed the ship off of the dock. There's a good space in between there. The ship is going astern right now. He's got his rudder set to zero, so back and straight. Now I'm going to go up over the top and show you a better view. But I was just saying that... Uh, I would have liked to have made this a longer video, but uh, unfortunately, uh, you can only go as long as the batteries will last, and I was over here, and all of a sudden, the thing started saying, hey, I need to come home, I'm running out of battery, <laughs> but that's not happening yet, we're still good. So the pilot will be on board the ship right now, and he's giving commands to the tugboats. And this is the same pilot that works with us. There are two pilots that we use all the time and uh, everywhere except San Juan and uh, St. Croix. And these guys, uh, they're great. They're, uh, it's it's nice when you're able to work with the same guys over and over again you start to get to know them and you get to know the way they they want things done and the way you can do things and uh, you guys work as a much better team that way and uh, it was nice to watch this guy do such a great job coordinating his tugboats to get this big ship off of the dock now I think what you're gonna start seeing here at some point the ship is coming astern you'll notice that the tugboat operators have have leaned a little bit so in other words they're they're moving their their stern of their tugboats towards the stern of the ship and they do that because as the ship comes back there's a tendency to want to what we call flop and that means that as the ship comes backwards the tugs will fall and they'll end up being heads and tails um, this is something that's avoided if you have a tractor tug because you can direction, you know, through the, because it's like an outboard engine that can spin 360 degrees, they can run the boat sideways. But conventional, uh, conventional tugs have to work a little bit more. One of the things they do is they set up so they get a better angle and then they'll work more on one engine. You'll see them come ahead a little bit and that coming ahead is just working on the rudder to try to keep them straight or a little bit better bent. Now you'll see some markings on the on the upper side of the ship, and uh, those are safety routes where to walk, where you should stay, and uh, a lot of them have to do with keeping out of a place where a line might snap or a tripping hazard might be. You'll also see a helicopter landing pad. Now you can see the water has been shut off on the outboard winch side, but it's still on this side over here. And uh, I was starting to say that a lot of times the water will run down the hose pipe and people are saying, why are they doing that? Well, when they run the hydraulics to run the uh, windlass, you know, to raise or lower the anchor, or in this case, the anchor has been disconnected, that part of the winch has been disconnected, but the winch parts still work to help to retrieve the lines. Um, a lot of them will run uh, seawater through to, to, to cool the hydraulics and they also dump it down the hose pipe to wash the chain and you know when they're anchored up they can bring up a lot of mud and it kind of gets real smelly and yucky so they wash that so that's what it, it's very common that when you're doing ship assist like that that you'll see water coming out of a hose pipe 
That's funny. You're seeing my uh, drone getting attacked by these local, like, I think they're swallows or something like that. When we were over at the Dominican Republic, that was a real issue. I was flying and the thing almost got taken out by a couple birds. I guess they, they really don't like... They're, they're very territorial. But now you'll see the stern tug has been released. He's taken in his line, and he's going to go to the other side. Now, I'm not, I haven't talked to the pilot about this particular job, but what I'm assuming is that he's going to go to anchor, so he's probably going to make a clockwise turn. In other words, the bow is going to continue to move to the right-hand side or to the starboard side. So the stern tug lets his line go, and he's going to go over, and I would imagine he's going to go on the stern of the ship and start pushing while the uh, tug up here on the bow is pushing this way, and it will rotate the whole ship and get him going that way. And this is a, a you know, um, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm only guessing what the pilot is doing, but this shouldn't be an issue to do this. For one, it's a very long ship, so it should back up relatively straight. And because they're having stern way on the ship, if the stern is going to go anyway, it's probably a right-handed wheel, like 99.9% .9 of all the ships of them out, are, out there, are out there. So the ship is probably going to back to port anyway. And then with the sys tug still on the bow, it's a very good chance that they're going to back up straight or even help out a little bit by having the stern go to port. So now... Uh, the assist tug is coming over here to uh, get in position to push, you know, the, the stern around. You can see us way three quarters of a mile off in the distance. Well, you could there for a second. But, uh, let's see. Yeah, and all that, if you look on the side of the ship, all that sand or mud that you're seeing kicked up, that's just a result of the wheel wash of the ship backing down. So... Say that no, not even close to uh, running aground or anything like that. Just uh, sediment that gets kicked up. We uh, the reason why I keep talking about this is it, it's, it's something that comes up in the comments all the time. So that's why I'm trying to address that now. So I would imagine the assist tug is ready to put up a line. And they're probably waiting for the deck crew to come over to receive the line, and then they'll start pushing over there. Or, or perhaps they could be over there waiting for the pilot to tell them to start pushing. And maybe the pilot wants to continue back a little bit more so that they'll clear that final dolphin there of the dock. Okay, so right now, the the my, my drone is in automatic mode. It has given up on me. And it's starting to find its way home because it's running out of battery. <laughs> so, like I said, I had to burn up a lot of battery to get over here, and then I flew around for a while, and then it had to burn up the battery going home, too. <laughs> so that's what had to happen. But it's been a lot of fun doing this. But anyway, that's a, that's a, a view I would have loved to have shown you in New York. A lot of people used to tell say, oh, you should have a drone in New York. Well, most of the work that we do up in New York when it was ship docking, or not ship docking, but bunkering ships, uh, was in uh, Port Elizabeth or Newark, New Jersey, which is in the no-fly zone for the airport. So that wouldn't have been a, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So just another thing that makes Puerto Rico special down here is an... Um, Things are a little bit different, and we're able to do this sort of thing. So, right here, you have a beautiful view. It doesn't look like I'm going. I'm, I'm moving at about 30, 33 miles an hour right now, and uh, but I'm am so high up that you can have a you have a good view of Guayania Bay, and that little part way ahead there. It looks like a really protected spot. That's really nice, but there isn't a whole lot of water. I think there's only like like six or seven feet of water in there at best. So we're in the in the part that's protected on uh, three sides, and uh, now all I got to do is get this thing home before it runs out of battery. And of course, it's beeping and doing all this stuff. And uh, I think I let it come home on automatic to about here, and then I shut it off and brought it in the rest of the way my, myself. And I, my heart was jumping out of my chest. But it was kind of funny because when I left, it said that I had like three minutes of battery left. 
So I came back, and by the time I got over here, I think I landed, and it said I had like four and a half or five minutes of battery left. So I guess I could have kept going, but this was the farthest I ever. There I am right there. You can see me all wigged out. Instead of catching it like I usually like to do, I said, you know what? In case this thing runs out of battery, I'm just going to land it right on the deck. <laughs> anyway, I hope you liked it, and um, thank you so much to all the patrons. And as always, you guys be safe, and I'll see you on the next one.